Hey, what's up guys? Uh, my first time doing this, but I wanted to, to get together a quick video. Explain to you guys what I did on my on my Coleman CT200U bike here. Um, first off, my goal of this was not to make it as fast as possible. It was basically to make this thing uh, just a just a mule. I want to want to be able to pull as much uh, as much weight as possible. So I wanted as much torque as possible is what I was going for. Um, and ultimately, I was uh, looking to put together a, a bike that can pull out deer from the woods uh, where we go hunting. There's uh, several large hills around there and um, we're always gassed trying to drag these deer out so wanted to put together a bike that would do the work for us so let me show you what I did started off by uh, doing what many people do is putting the new 212 engine on there um, from Harbor Freight Tools so the Predator 212 went on first and then uh, because of the way that the gas tank comes on that 212 I had to um, swap out the gas tank from the stock engine and uh, swap that out on top so I could uh, get to the gas fill otherwise it would have been uh, right under here and it uh, would have been really hard to get to uh, so this way it's kind of offset and you can still get to the fill there um, next up I uh, <clears throat> removed the governor from inside the engine and took out the gears in there and then I raised up uh, the engine on the mount here you can see um, I went with the three-quarter inch tubing from Home Depot and um, was able to find a paint that matched it uh, just perfect. So mounted it up another three quarters of an inch, which got it out of the way. And you can see um, over on the other side, you can see the back side of the torque converter, which I installed. And you can see it just fits on there perfect without having to trim that torque converter. Uh, so that worked out real good. Um, also as part of that mod, I had to remove the, the chain bracket that goes back here and on the other side. And then the other bracket that install, installs right there, or rather was attached right there. Um, so I clipped those off and painted up the ends of it to make it look, look decent there. Alright, then I did put the new torque converter on like I said. Um, it's just the, the torque converter, the 30 series from uh, Go Power Sports. And uh, that's worked out real good. I'm not going to take the cover off because it's kind of a pain the way I have it wedged in there. But um, it's worked out great. A lot of great low end power as well as, as high end power there. And then uh, probably the biggest thing for, for pulling in addition to the torque converter is I swapped out this um, this sprocket here. This is the uh, 72 tooth sprocket. It's the largest sprocket I could get from uh, Go Power Sports. And it's made a real difference. In comparison, here is the stock sprocket that comes on it. You can see it's quite a bit smaller. All right. And then, um, let's see, and I went with the performance kit, uh, the, the Coleman performance kit, which includes this exhaust, which comes out over here. So performance exhaust, as well as the air intake here, which is a huge air in intake, probably more than is necessary, as well as a new jet for the carb down here, uh, which was very simple to put in. Um, so those three things there added uh, some more, uh, some more uh, power and, um, and torque. And let's see. Oh, the last thing is I um, I uh, put new 18-pound valve springs in here. Um, I think it comes with 12 or something like that. And I was just a little worried with all the extra RPMs that I was going to blow those out. So I uh, went ahead and proactively replaced those valve springs uh, to give me a little more a um, little more robust of a setup there. And then uh, I guess the last thing after that, uh, and that didn't add a new part, but um, I wanted to reuse this kill switch that comes on the bike um, rather than having to uh, reach down here and use this switch on the uh, on the actual Predator engine. So I actually talked to the guys at Go Power Sports and they said, yeah, why don't you just um, wire that kill switch to the low oil, uh, the low oil um, alert here that basically cuts the engine off if, if you go low on oil. Um, but really the way that the engine's set up, he said, you're never really gonna use that. It's, it's, um, it's really not necessary. So uh, basically I just wired it up to that and now the existing kill switch works just fine. So that's basically what we've done. And um, if you're noticing this, this contraption on the back, it's uh, part of a um, trailer setup. And I'll show you that here in a second. I'll hook up the, uh, 
the cart that I have for the the uh, deer hauler and show you how that works. All right, so this is the actual deer cart that uh, I use to hook up to the bike. Um, it, it's just an existing deer cart that I had from about 10 years ago. Uh, I used to use it to drag deer up and out of the woods. Um, the problem is it was still taking some of these bigger deer and some of these uh, these hills that we have to traverse depending on where you where you get the deer um, you know it's taken an hour hour and a half two hours uh, just to get it out of the woods so um, that was the really the whole purpose was uh, of this build was to build a uh, a bike and a, and a setup that allows me to do it much quicker so I took that existing cart and basically attached a one by three piece of oak plenty strong uh, for what I'm doing with it. Um, I put some plates of aluminum on the end, which I cut and um, just screwed on there on the top. There's one on the bottom as well. And that's what I use to mount the uh, one and seven eighths inch ball to that. So it's nice and um, nice and strong here. And I don't have to worry about cracking this wood. Um, so that's an inch of the seven eighths inch ball. And the, uh, the actual receiver here on the, on the bike is actually two inches. And I did that on purpose I wanted there to be some travel in this and you can see uh, even the way it sits right now um, it's kind of headed downhill but it can go even more if needed if I come back here and kind of lift this up you can see as I lift this up I mean there's all kinds of travel and maneuvering ability maneuverability um, because it is a little bit loose in there but it's not so loose that it's gonna come out so um, that's just great if you don't know exactly where you're going to be going there's no trails where you're going um, this allows you to kind of go up hills down hills over creeks around tight corners without having to worry about anything getting bound up if you noticed i did uh paint some of these surfaces again after either after i cut them or after i fabbed up um, a little piece so like these tubings here um, i didn't want them to look like just uh, aluminum tubing so i actually uh, painted those and then back here where i had to to cut out some of the uh, the bracing for the chain guard um, anyway I wanted to share the uh, the paint that I found to do that with it's a rust-oleum painters touched uh, 2x ultra cover paint and primer in one uh, and it's gloss colonial red is the color and I think that that color is just about as close as you're gonna get um, looks just like the uh, the Coleman red and uh, if you have to do some cutting and you want it to match and just do a, a quick touch up I uh, highly recommend it. So there's the finished product. That's how it looks when we uh, when we haul it into the woods to go get deer. Um, I uh, got to say, I didn't know if it would do the job. Um, the box says uh, the bike would carry 200 pounds, uh, up to 200 pounds. Well, I'm over 200 pounds myself. And by the time you, you pile on uh, hunting gear, guns, backpacks, and then, you know, 175 pound, 200 pound deer on the back. Um, I was really worried this thing may not make it up uh, up the hills, and I might be burning out uh, belts on that on that uh, torque converter. But honestly, it did everything I wanted it to do, uh, and more. So let me cut over to that, and I'll show you a video of us uh, dragging. I think this is the first deer we got out last year. Um, so I'll show you how uh, how it worked out, and um, come back and close this out. guys well hope you enjoyed the video uh, I want to say I don't have any experience with uh, any kind of welding or plasma cutters or any kind of fabrication I basically just came up with um, with ways to do this with the tools that I have and basically watching videos on uh, YouTube uh, I want to give a big shout out to Greg at Redbeard's Garage um, really inspired me to to just kind of dive in and give it a shot um, and uh, it, it worked out great like I said the way it turned out um, is exactly what I wanted to do uh, also uh, go power sports has some great performance parts for this um, which is 
which is a, a big help just to be able to find something and plug it in. The um, out of the box when I first bought this thing with the existing engine and everything, it was about 19 and a half miles an hour is all it would do with me on it. Um, now even with the huge uh, huge sprocket on the back, that torque converter really helps out, and uh, it'll still do about 39 miles an hour. 39 and a half is what I had it up to. Now I'm not going to be doing that in the woods, obviously, and not with anything on the back. But um, it's nice to know I can just unhook the unhook the uh, little trailer I got back there and still have a bunch of fun with it, just zipping around the yard and out in the fields and stuff. So um, don't be worried about that. You won't lose that much top end as long as you do the other conversions I did. I think really the the biggest one being that torque converter. Um, I guess that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope I've inspired you to do something. If uh, you've been looking at something similar, the um, the mods I did here are more than capable of of handling um, everything I threw at it.